Good evening, Canterbury. I'm Mike Yardley. Welcome to Newsmakers, where we debate the week's stories through Canterbury eyes. It's a pleasure to introduce our panel from Canterbury University, the Head of Social and Political Science, Sciences, uh, Jim Tully, uh, author and writer Bruce Ansley, and the Chairman of the Central City Business Association, Anthony Goff. Thank you very much for joining us Good after another you. rugged week. Uh, we are going to start, obviously, with Mother Nature, and our peace has been shattered. Canterbury has been battered for the last fortnight. Two weeks on, the recovery effort continues as people yearn for a return to normality and familiarity. Before we deal to some of the specific matters that have flared up in recent days, um, your overriding impressions from the past two weeks, what's caught your eye? What have been some of those indelible moments that you'll never forget? Bruce. Well, part of the reason they are indelible is that they all seem to happen about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's when the worst shocks always hit. And I think that's most people I talk to feel the same way, that it's just about time this earthquake packed its bags and shot through. It's, uh, you know, we're not getting much sleep. There's um, aftershock after aftershock. What did we have about 11 yesterday, I think? Mm. Um, but that aside, you know, it's, uh, you know, you know uh, there's this feeling that you know, I'm OK, my house is undamaged. Uh, I've done, I suppose, as most people have, 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 have tried to do and gone to help other people and that whole thing is sort of happened over the city. I'm, I'm very proud of the city. I'm very proud of the town. Mm. Did you think it was the end of the world a couple of weeks ago? No, but I did wonder what was happening. Um, the earth certainly moved for me. Um, but the great thing that I've found is that all the, the help of people who sort of turned out of nowhere and came to help us, I think that's wonderful. The biggest message we have to get out is Actually, town's up and running. Please come and join us. You know, I had guests who had booked them into my Poplar's apartment as freebies. These are travel agents for over, overseas. And New Zealand Tourism said, don't go to Christchurch. So they cancelled. That is appalling. We are all running and it's great. And I think it's tremendously good what, what we've achieved so far. Now, Jim, I understand you were one of the lucky ones. You weren't here when mm. Mother Nature first threw the big tantrum, right? Absolutely. We were in Australia. Yeah. Came home about 24 hours later, um, with some apprehension, of course. Yeah. The thing that stuck out for me is not so much the wonderful things that have happened in the city and the resilience of the community, but the reaction of, of others. I have a, an American colleague recently arrived who was uh, sitting in their car in the driveway within minutes of the quake, not knowing what to do. They know what to do with a, a typhoon or tornado or whatever. But he's been astounded by the, the way in which water came back on, power came back on. Mm -hmm. And more interesting than that, I think, is the fact that a Chinese uh, weekly news magazine with a readership of six million, <clears throat> excuse me, is very, very keen to try and understand and, and the commission a story um, on why it was that the city was not devastated as they would expect and, and, and incredulity about the, the lack of death, the lack of this kind of damage that they would expect and, and had 16 questions um, that they want asked of mayors and, and others because they were just amazed at the way in which we came through it. So I guess from the outside world um, people will be somewhat astounded at the wonderful recovery that others have spoken about. Yes. Are you amazed by that, that we don't seem to have actually lost any human life from this natural disaster? I'm totally astonished. I mean, it's been put down to the fact that it happened at around about half past four and there's mm. nobody on the streets, which I suppose is another crash huge thing. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, we, uh, there's been, there was that poor man who was caught underneath his chimney and yes. run up in a coma, but he's OK. Apart from that, as far as I can see, the death toll stands at one car and one lemur. Yes, indeed. Um, and it's amazing when you just speak to people in conversation around the traps how so many people seem to have had very lucky escapes with chimneys coming through their roofs, landing on their bed, you know, inches, mm. millimetres away from their head. I don't know how we got off without any fatalities. Mm. It's no, probably it's partly a reflection of our building codes vis a vis yeah. uh, countries in the developing world, but um, I mean, there was an amazing luck, and we saw images on um, the web within a very short time of the earthquake mm. and you know we were expecting the worst because obviously people had been wandering around taking photographs of the most extreme damage that yes. they'd come across so we were really nervous um, in terms of what we might find by later in the day of course we we could see that 
the city had got off remarkably lightly mm. when you consider the scale of the earthquake. Because as people know, I mean, 7.1, anything over 7 is a damn big earthquake by world standards. Absolutely, yes. Mm. It was the same reading as the Haiti earthquake, I think, Absolutely. wasn't it? Yeah. And, and stronger than San Francisco, which was 6.9. And we know how much damage and death was at San Francisco. Yes. So I think it's a real credit to New Zealand and our building standards. I am going to look at building standards um, going forward with regard to the earthquake strengthening debate. We'll rip into that uh, in the second part of the show, but um, in terms of how the city is bouncing back, you've referred to business activity, Anthony. Do you think the world is catching up with the correct messages now that Christchurch is open for business? If you're a prospective visitor, you're coming to a safe place, you'll find attractions open. I don't think the outside world has yet, but the New Zealand world has. Our hotel, we lost 50% of our guests in one, one of my hotels at 6 in the morning. They just packed their bags, got in their car and drove out of town at 6 in the morning mm. said, I'm not staying in this city. Um, we've had a 20% cancellation so far this month, but by the end of the month we'll be back up to full full rate. Our restaurants are now running at normal capacity. They were very slow to begin with. So I see a very fast recovery in that regard. I don't think it's going to be months, it's going to be days. From the intelligence you've managed to glean so far, within the CBD, how many businesses do you think are gone for good? Probably 1%. Really? That's all? Mm. Yeah. But I would imagine there will be a bit of a, a lead in time for some of those operators, won't there, to get rebuilt, to get back up and running? But the great thing is there's been some vacancies there. So yeah. uh, I, had a la I as a, sitting as a landlord, have two office spaces. They're both let. So I think we're going to see those people whose buildings have been damaged will actually go into some other premises. So I actually think it will be good. How are you coping with the aftershocks? Is there going to be a point where you've had enough and will decamp from Christchurch, Jim? No, I won't decamp. I mean, if we have something six plus, which, you know, was being mooted, we're still being told that we could expect a couple of fives if we follow the Haiti pattern. Mm. Um, I know it's not going to make me leave at all, but I know a lot of people are really frazzled and uh, sleepless. Mm. I saw a colleague yesterday with three young kids and, you know, it, Every night they wake up um, and they're at the end of their tether. And I think there'll be a lot of people like that. And if we have another big aftershock, I really would be interested to see how many people would take off at that point. Yes. Because you don't get used to them, do you? No. You don't. Um, you, you, uh, we've had uh, something like 20 a day or something, say average, probably more than that, actually. Then you'd think that we, you would think, oh, well, it's just another aftershock. But I find I still tense, especially in the big ones. And uh, then your house rocks, and you wonder how much longer your house is going to hold together. And, and you uh, know, the point about the uh, lack of damage in that, I mean, <clears throat> look at the number of heart attacks people have been having, yeah, way yeah. above the norm. Mm. Seven fatal mm. one Friday night out of eight. And so clearly, the stress levels must be increasing. Huge. Huge. Absolutely. Uh, an interesting thing that I've had is that I've got an adult Chinese student who lives at my house, and her parents are very nervous. Earthquakes over there of that magnitude mean fairly high level of death and they said you better get on a plane fly back only daughter and all this sort of thing and she said no I actually feel safer here in Christchurch than going back to China <laughs> now I thought that said an awful lot about Christchurch and where how she has fitted in and says these buildings are actually pretty safe I'm in a two-story house she's upstairs got swung around a bit but it's wooden house it was fine she said no I'd stay in New Zealand please she's probably more terrified of your attire <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> that was a most uncharitable comment we'll take a break coming up we'll have a look at the earthquake strengthening debate which has reared its head in Christchurch this week. Plenty to come. Do stay with us.